1930s. And these are historical type songs. Uh, they tell a story or they set, uh, talk about a phenomenon that was going on at that time. Um, I was going to use some recordings here, but I'm not, not sure I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll do that. I'll wait a minute on that. Um, this next song is, is quite interesting. It was copywritten in 1920 by a ukulele player named Wendell Hall, but uh, Carl Sandberg says it goes back to 1870 or thereabouts. And uh, it certainly was popular. Uh, the song was so popular that if you had a band, let's say around 1900, you played in the local bandstand, and the people wanted you to play this song and they wanted you to play it more than once. Uh, it's called It Ain't Gonna Rain No More No More. And uh, I'll tell you why, why it made an impression on me when I was a little kid. Um, but the song was phenomenally popular, phenomenally popular. And then the droughts came and people, the American public can be superstitious at times, I think. Um, people blamed the song for the drought. And it became like, don't play that song. You know, we, we, need a, we need some rain. Do not, under any circumstances, play this song. Since the weather's in Clement tonight, I figure I'd take a chance here. Um, I don't know if I do the whole thing, but. The butterfly flits on wings of gold. The June bug wings of flame. The big bug has no wings at all, but it gets there just the same. Oh, it ain't gonna rain no more, no more. It ain't gonna rain no more. How in the world do the old folks know? It ain't gonna rain no more. Bullfrog sitting on the lily pad. He's looking up at the sky. The lily pad broke and the frog fell in. Got water all in his eye. Oh, it ain't gonna Uh, 